Now it's time for the Rand Alliance partners. And it's now my pleasure. We have each of us uh, agreed that we would like to focus on specific act, uh, um, aspects. And uh, um, then each of us has a short intervention. Um, in the interest of time, I would request all the partners to keep really the uh, few minutes, and maybe it's possible to do it in five minutes that we still have some time for discussion. Um, and the first uh, who is going to intervene now is uh, Dr. Marit Bromo, who is the executive director of the International Geothermal Association. Marit, uh, you will speak about the importance of policies to achieve what's been presented and what we also want to see. Marit, the floor is yours. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Stefan, uh, on behalf of the REN Alliance to have us all speaking on, um, on the importance of collaboration, because it is not one that fits it all. It is all of us that fits the entire goal of achieving this 100% renewable mission that I think we all underwrite. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased, Rana. Because you nail it when you say it is about the consumption, it's about the demand, it's about the people who are using energy. And if they don't demand change, we can target whatever we want from the supply side. And I say this predominantly speaking on behalf of geothermal because I see that that's always been our push. We push the technology. We, we cry out for more geothermal from a technology side, but we hardly sort of advocate it. And hence, this is really the change we have been targeting together with all our friends within the Renewable Alliance, Rana with you, with IEA and with Arena, that we look at all these end users and ask ourselves the question, how can we transform the energy consumption patterns? Whether it is, is industry focused? Yes, we are an industry association, so we're very interested in developing geothermal on behalf of our industry partners. But we really target it now from a policy point of view. Because if you're just looking at tax breaks and carbon taxes, and, and if you try to make these rigid mechanisms in order to allow more supply coming into your grid when we talk about power or very importantly for us in geothermal we look a lot to drive the energy change patterns for heating and cooling and it is with that in mind that we have targeted a few countries where leadership especially political leadership on robust frameworks for policy designs and regulations on understanding how to shift not just the fossil fuel base, but the entire thinking of what is sustainable for my energy consumption pattern. How much of electricity is actually needed in combination with the heating and cooling demand for a specific sector? And to take a few examples here within geothermal, we've been working hard with the agribusiness side. Food is going to be fundamental for all of us human beings out there and the need to produce more locally grown food also looks at an agricult an agribusiness, for instance, the horticulture and the agribusiness um, um, greenhouse sector in terms of 90% based on gas, 90% based on fossil fuel uh, supply uh, chains. Um, looking at it from a green certificate point of view, looking at local options for diversification of solar with, for instance, geo. So have a heat pump together with a solar system or have a geothermal well producing enough heat to combine it with solar electricity, PV or in any type of setting that can help drive that both type of supply into a given cluster of agricultural uh, promising businesses. And cities are doing that more and more as well. System integration, but it requires someone who takes let's say, the lead in terms of des designing, in terms of facilitating, but also in terms of orchestrating that energy consumption pattern. Another thing that I vouch very strongly for is that, yes, again, to Rana and her team, I think the GSR clearly shows a couple of brave things. Not only do you really show and underpin the need to transform the need to, to, to transform the energy consumption, but also the fact that 80% is still fossil fuel based. 10 years, you said, Rana, 10 years of hard work and it's still 80% fossil fuel based. So if we're continuing on that path, 
it's going to be darn hard, I would say, to meet that Paris Agreement goal. And I think part of the thinking behind changing just the supply and looking at the switch side of thing is about understanding the consumption for direct heating and cooling purposes. Because I do get it why people want to focus on electricity. I'm not against that mission. But if I look at um, the levelized cost of energy, which is equivalent for many cases on um, the levelized cost of electricity, I really ask myself sometimes the question, and maybe this is where we hold hands with solar as well, why are we not targeting more and more the levelized cost of heat? Because in most cases, if our consumption stays around at 50 to 80% of our energy consumption sits for reasons and purposes for heating and cooling, then I think it's time to think about how can we quantify the unit of heat better in an economic system that helps drive to learn from each other to drive benefits out of our energy consumption and talk about value instead of a constant demand for a cost benefits analysis based on cost. I leave it like that. Uh, Stefan, again, I want to thank you for your, um, well, your opportunity to talk about uh, policies and the needs to do some adjustment in our thinking. I think it's time to hold hands much stronger across the entire value chain for renewables. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Martin. And I think indeed we, we need kind of new paradigms now with this with this huge transformation that we need. Um, we heard from uh, Ricardo, you were also already touching that at the end of your uh, speech.